So today's lesson is on section 8.3 of the book, and our objectives are the student will be able to add and subtract rational expressions. Uh, remember, rational expressions are anything that can be written as a fraction, and simplify complex fractions. So to start with, let's just look at what you first learned when you looked with fractions with addition and subtraction. So an example. 4 sevenths plus 2 sevenths, remember to add fractions, you have to have a common denominator, which in this case is 7. And then we just add the numerators together, so 4 plus 2 is 6, and we get 6 sevenths. Fairly easy for you. With subtraction, nothing changes, we have to have a common denominator. But now we just subtract the numerators, so 4 minus 2 is 2 sevenths. Where it starts to get complicated for everybody is what happens when the fractions don't have a common denominator. So let's say we're doing 4 sevenths plus 2 fifths. Well, if you remember back when you first learned how to add and subtract fractions, you must have a common denominator. So we rewrite these, and what we have to do is find the first number that 7 and 5 both go into, in this case, 35. And then remember, you say, what do I have to multiply 7 by to get to 35, which is 5. And so I multiply the 4 also by 5, and we get 20. And then we do the same thing with the other fraction. What do we have to multiply 5 by to get to 35, which is 7. So I have to multiply the bottom by 7. So I multiply the top by 7, and we get 14. The addition subtraction makes no difference. If it's a minus, that would just be a minus. So in this case, we get 20 plus 14 equals 34, and so we get 34 35ths. So the process stays the same. We just complicate it when we go to rational expressions. So our steps to add and subtract rational expressions. And what I'm going to do is just take you through some examples as we go through each step. So we'll start with one where we have a common denominator already. So let's say 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 2 minus 4x plus 4 over x squared plus 2. So our first step is to factor the denominators. In this case, we can't factor either one of these, and they're the same. So we can just leave it that way. So we've done the first step. We can't factor the denominators. You don't need to, like you could pull a 4 out of this, but we don't need to factor the numerators. We just want to leave the numerators the way they are. Once we've factored the denominators, we must have a common denominator. So we look at these once they're factored. In this case, they are the same. So that common denominator in this case is x squared plus 2. Our third step is to rewrite the expressions with the least common denominator. And to do that, you multiply the numerator and denominators by the missing factors, anything that you're missing in one denominator to get to the new denominator. Well, in this case, it's, we don't have to worry about that because the denominators are already the same. So we can skip step two and we can skip, skip step three and go directly to 4, which is add or subtract the numerators. And remember, the denominator remains the same. So if we go back to this problem now, with subtraction signs, my advice is change it to addition and change the sign of everything in the numerator after the addition sign. So now we combine like terms. So 2x plus a negative 4x is a negative 2x. And negative 1 plus a negative 4 is a negative 5. And we get x squared plus 2. And in this case, we're finished. Uh, the only other step we have is to simplify. And that would be, it says factor numerators if possible and reduce. You always want to check and see, can I factor that numerator? And is there maybe something in the denominator that's factorable also if we factored it that could cancel out? In this case, we don't have hardly any of the steps. We can skip step two, three, and five, and we just had to do step four. 
So let's go to one where we do have to do all the steps. So x minus 1, x squared plus 3x plus 2, plus x over x plus 1. So the first thing it asks us to do is factor the denominators. Okay, remember the denominator is the bottom part. So in this case, we can factor that, and that factors into x plus 2 and x plus 1. Now, you may have to use the x method or however you factor, but again, my advice is always check it. x times x is x squared. 2 times 1 is 2. 2x two plus x is 3x, so I know I'm right. The x plus 1 I can't factor, so again, my advice is put parentheses around it. Gives you all one factor there. So we factored the denominators. Now we must have a common denominator. So when you find the common denominators, what you do is you look at each factor, and you have to take the most of that factor that occurs in any one of the denominators, not in the total. So when we look here, we have an x plus 2. So I need an x plus 2 in my denominator. Now, I have an x plus 1 here and an x plus 1 here. You take the most that occur in any one of the denominators. So you don't take 2 because there's two of them. You take 1 because that's the highest amount in any of the denominators. So that is my common denominator, x plus 2 times x plus 1. Now, a lot of times... Like the book will show it this way. They'll rewrite both fractions. And you can do that. And I'll show you in a second. I don't do that. And how you can decide whichever way makes more sense to you. But now what we do if we go to the, we've got the common denominator. So now we rewrite the expressions with the least common denominator. And it says multiply the numerator denominators by the missing factors. So what it's talking about there is we look at the original fraction, and we say, what is that missing so it looks like this? In this case, it's the same, right? Nothing changed. So then our numerator stays the same, and we get x minus 1. Now when we go to the other one, though, we have x plus 1. Well, we're missing, when we look at our new denominator, we're missing the x plus 2. So to get from here to here, I have to multiply that by x plus 2. So I multiply the numerator by x plus 2. So we get to that point. Then our next part, it says add or subtract the numerators, denominator remains the same. So now I have to go back, and we need to simplify this. So I'm going to distribute the x. And so we get x squared plus 2x. And now because the denominators are the same, we just add the numerators together. So I'm going to put this in standard form. So I have an x squared. I have an x plus a 2x is 3x minus 1 over my denominator remains the same. Then again, we should check to see if we can factor this. That is not factorable, so we're finished. And so we're done. So I showed you kind of, this is the way the book would do it. Because your denominators are the same, I'll show you this again. What I do is just keep this in one fraction because my denominator is not going to change as I go through this. So I just do it and write plus, and I put this new numerator all over the so I don't have to write this long fraction out twice or three times if I had more than two terms. So either way, it doesn't make any difference, whichever you prefer. 
I just combine it now because I know that denominator is going to remain the same and I don't want to rewrite it every time. All right? So that would be an example there. Let's go through another one. x over x plus 3 plus negative 18 over x squared minus 9. Okay? So, we want to factor the denominators. We can't factor x plus 3, so I'm just going to put that in parentheses. But we can factor this. This is the difference of two squares x plus 3 and x minus 3. So now my common denominator, I have 1x plus 3 here and 1 there. The most I have in any denominator is 1. Again, not the total, just the most. And then I need an x minus 3. So now we look at this one and we say, what do I have to multiply this by so it looks like that? Well, I have the x plus 3. What I'm missing is the x minus 3. So I'm going to take this x here and times it by x minus 3. Now I'm just going to, I'm not going to rewrite that denominator. I'm going to keep it all together. So then, in our second one, I already have everything. So the numerator doesn't change. So I just put minus 18. So now we have to simplify it distribute the x, and so we get x squared minus 3x minus 18. Again, that's over x plus 3, x minus 3. Now I want to try and factor this. This is where the step 5 comes in. Simplify factor numerators if possible. So I'm going to factor this, and that factors into x minus 6 and x plus 3. Again, if I check it, x squared, yes. Negative 18, yes. Negative 6x to positive 3x, negative 3x. So this is a case where now I have an x plus 3 in both the numerator and the denominator. And so we get x minus 6 over x minus 3. Now, on some of these, they may ask you to list restrictions. Remember, the restrictions are what x can't be, and the denominators can't be 0. So in this case, if I had to list the restrictions, x could not equal negative 3 or positive 3, whatever would make the denominator 0. All right. x squared minus 16 over x squared minus 4 minus x plus 4 and x plus 2. Alright? So again, we want to factor the denominators. That is the difference of two squares. So x plus 2 and x minus 2. This one I can't factor. So my common denominator, I have to have 1x plus 2. And I have 1 here and 1 here. No, excuse me. 1 here and 1 here, the x plus 2. So I need one of them. And I need 1x minus 2. So again, this one we don't need to multiply by anything. Because it's already that. So my numerator stays the same. Now here's where you have to be careful. This x plus 2, I've got to multiply it by x minus 2 to get to here. So I times this by x minus 2. Well, I have that minus sign. So I'm going to keep that minus sign there. Okay? And now I have to simplify that numerator. And here's where you have to be careful because of this minus sign. So 
I'm going to go 2x squared minus 16, and I'm going to just use the FOIL or CLAW method on this. x times both gives you x squared minus 2x, and then 4 times both, so 4x minus 8. And so we get, we have that minus sign, I'm going to put it in parentheses. x squared negative 2x plus 4x is 2x minus 8. And then I have to distribute this negative sign. I'm not going to write the denominator again. It's still there. 2x squared minus 16 minus x squared minus 2x plus 8. Because I had to take that minus sign and distribute it to everything in the parentheses. So again, your denominator is still there. I just don't want to write it every single time. So now I'm going to take and finish this. 2x squared minus x squared would be x squared. Uh, I just have a minus 2x. And then negative 16 plus 8 would be minus 8. And then that factors into x minus 4. And x plus 2, check it. x squared, yes. Negative 8, yeah, yes. Negative 4x and 2x is negative 2x. And then that is over... We go back to our denominator that we kind of let go for a little while. x plus 2, x minus 2, and the x plus 2s cancel. So we get x minus 4 over x minus 2. And our restrictions were x could not equal negative 2 or positive 2. So on all the ones we've done so far, we've only had to multiply one of the fractions to work it out. So let's do one where we have to do them both. So let's go... x minus 3 over x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus, or let's go plus 3. And then let's go x plus 2. Um, this is going to have to be a minus 3. And let's go x squared um, plus 5x plus 6. Sure. So now we have, again, we just go through our steps, factor the denominators. So that's x plus 3 and x minus 1. And this factors into x plus 3 and x plus 2. So we factor them, find the least common denominator. So now we get, we have to have an x plus 3. We have 1 there and 1 there, so we need 1. We have an x minus 1, 1 there and none there, so we need 1. And then we have an x plus 2 there, so we need an x plus 2. So in this case, we have three terms there. So now we go back, and we're going to take this x minus 3, and we look at this, and we say, what do I have to multiply this by? Well, we have the x plus 3, we have the x minus 1, we're missing the x plus 2. Plus, now I'm going to take this one, now we look here and we say, well, we have the x plus 3, we have the x plus 2, we're missing the x minus 1, so I multiply that by x minus 1. Okay, so now we simplify this, so I'm going to have to FOIL that, I'm going to go ahead and that would be x squared minus x minus 6, and this would be plus x squared 2x and minus x, we have plus x minus 2. 
which simplifies into 2x squared, the x's cancel, minus 8. I can factor that, I can pull a 2 out, and then I can factor that. Now, this whole time I've dropped that denominator, just because I don't want to have to write that every time. It's still there, so now we put it back into the problem. x plus 3, x minus 1, and x plus 2. And now we look for any common factors. In this case, I can cancel the x plus 2's, and so my final answer is 2 times x minus 2 over x plus 3 times x minus 1. You don't need to distribute that, because we factored it to see if we can cancel anything, so just leave it in that form. Now the last thing that you're going to have to do, you're going to have some what are called complex fractions. They're going to seem more difficult when you look at it than what they are. So example would be, it's where you have a fraction in a fraction, or a fraction divided by another fraction. Okay? When you have something like this, what you want to do is simplify each part separately. So we're going to start by just working with this. So we again, we go through our steps. Common denominator in this case would be 4x. I have to multiply x by 4 to get to this, so I multiply this by 4, and we get 8. And I have to multiply the 4 by x to get to that, so I multiply that by, and I get 8 plus x squared over 4x. And then this is divided by, now in this case, I can't do anything here, and I can't do anything here. So now we have a fraction divided by a fraction. If we go back to our rules on dividing fractions, that tells us to multiply by the reciprocal. So I take and times this by, and I just flip this fraction over, x over x plus 1. So remember, I could write this 8 plus x squared over 4x. And instead of writing divided by this way, I could just change it to x over x plus 1. Actually this. Divided by x plus 1 over x. And then dividing is times by the reciprocal. So I now have this. I have an x on top and an x on bottom. Remember, I can't cancel these x's because it has something added to it. So a good idea is to put that parentheses there. I can't factor that, so I get 8 plus x squared over 4 times x plus 1. And we're finished. So your assignment for today is page 588, numbers 17 to 45, the odds, and you can skip problem number 31.